The XSS protection header is an older header that tells the browsers to turn on their built-in cross-site scripting defenses. It's worth noting that the cross-site scripting header is under deprecation. Eventually it'll be phased out as it's being replaced with content security policy. But in the meantime, while we're in this transitional phase, we still need to support the legacy headers while also supporting the new headers. Fortunately, browsers don't mind if you set both headers. So you can set both cross-site script policy header and you can also set content security policy header and the browser will pick the best one available. So if there was some very old browser, it would choose the XSS header and a modern browser would automatically favor the content security policy. Let's take a look at how to set this header. So first we'll take a look at a site that doesn't have the header set correctly and then we'll fix it. We're going to use live HTTP headers to watch the headers for the requests and the responses. We're really only interested in this, the response headers. So we'll just click on the home button here just to cause a browse to the site and that'll start fetching the various pages. So we can see originally that the browser browsed out and it sent its request headers and the server responded back and it responded back with a cross-site scripting protection header but it doesn't have the value that we were looking for. It has a value of zero which effectively turns off the XSS protection and this is equivalent to not sending the header at all. So either a missing header or a header with the wrong value would be a finding on a vulnerability report. So let's fix this. We can fix it in our web server and we would want to do this in the web server tier even though applications are capable of issuing headers we don't want to issue a global header in an app because recall that an application only gets involved for web page fetches that are generated by that framework. Like if you browse to a PHP page, PHP will generate the page. But if you have a JavaScript file in that same page, the PHP has nothing to do with fetching the JavaScript file. The web server is perfectly capable of grabbing the static content by itself. So you'll end up with inconsistent header application if you let the app be in charge of putting the headers into the response. So it's important to understand the web architecture and make sure that you have the correct server issuing the headers. And generally speaking, with a couple of exceptions, the web server is the correct appliance to issue response headers. So we're going to follow that approach. And just to make this a little bit easier, I've created a file called headers.conf that I can keep all my headers in nice and separate from the rest of the configuration so it's a very clean install. And I just refer to that file in any servers that I want to pull in. So I have Matility server configured. We'll take a look real quick at what that looks like. And you'll notice that I have an include statement that includes the contents of header.conf. That way I don't need to actually put the contents of header.conf here in line and repeat myself up here in the other virtual host. I can just include the headers.conf file and the letters in that file will automatically be substituted in all the different configurations of all the different virtual servers that are using that one file. So in headers.conf we have a couple of choices of how to solve this problem. One is we can use header setup empty. And this allows the application to decide the value of the header. But if the application failed to create the header, the web server would go ahead and add the header 
as it's passing the response back to the browser. And that is appropriate for some headers. There are certain headers like cache control that we definitely want the application's input and we want to allow the application to have the final say. In this case, we just want to set the XSS protection header globally and no matter what, we just want to include it in every response. So we're going to use a different technique and that's the header set. So with header set, Apache's just going to set it. So we use this method, save our changes, restart the service, and then we'll go back over and repeat the demo that we were doing earlier. So let's clear out the contents, go back and generate some traffic. I'll just browse to the home page. Here's the header that we were interested in, process urgent protection, and now has the correct value which is one, meaning enabled, followed by the directive mode equals lock.